Well, turn with me, if you would, to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, covering a bit of ground today, so it won't be getting in the nitty gritty as we often would as much, probably cutting short a little bit of application, but that's okay. We've had a good bit of application regarding remaining sin and our battle with sin the last several weeks, but just wanted to finish off Romans 7 and not drop us off at an awkward spot as I go on sabbatical, and Mike uh, will be focusing in that summer series on Ecclesiastes most, uh, mostly this summer, Lord willing, uh, beginning uh, this coming Sunday. But we finish off uh, this, yeah, tough text in terms of interpretation. Um, a little bit of controversy today, so parting uh, in the sabbatical, a little bit of controversy, but hopefully we can leave on good terms, and uh, I'll elaborate on that a little bit as we get into the, to the text. But um, yeah, so we cover some ground. And as we do that, I want us to consider that there are ultimately two kinds of errors that can occur in biblical interpretation. One of those kinds of errors is disastrous. And on the other, ha- other hand, that kind, a kind of error is merely unfortunate. Let me explain. The disastrous kind of misinterpretation takes place when a person comes to a conclusion that is outright unbiblical, meaning it contradicts what the Bible teaches on the whole. The conclusion itself is false. It's not a matter of getting the text wrong. You're getting truth wrong, which often occurs by taking verses out of context to back up what you already want the truth to be. You have something in your mind, you want to prove that that's true, and you come into a text and it sounds like it's saying what you want it to say. It may be even saying the same words that you are saying, but yet the context would prove otherwise.